Are you going or me? Uh, you can go. Okay. <laughs> well, we're live. It doesn't matter. Yeah. We're all going right now. We're we're going. We're rolling. We're, we're going. We're Every, we're doing. Everybody's guys, like, "Hey, would you guys talk?" <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everybody's like, "What the flip?" So, Joel two, where he pours out a spirit on all flesh, including servants and women and men, and old men will dream dreams and young men will see visions. Is that how it works? How does that work in the church? This was a question on a podcast before. So we're going to talk about that this morning. Find out all of that and more on Self Evident Podcast. I kind of right, like that smile man. at the end. That's sweet. <laughs> that Guys, welcome to Self Evident Podcast. You got Massey, you got Mike. Yo. Uh, welcome, welcome, welcome. Thanks for being here with us. It's a minute and 13, and I think now's a safe time to put up the slide, Mike. Is that okay for the money? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ahead. So, yeah, if you guys want to text to give, that's totally cool. You guys can do it 772 242 0299. We were 15 seconds early, but we'll be Yeah, okay. we were two, 15 seconds too early last time. And <laughs> folks, for crying in the mud, subscribe. I mean it. Please. I got the picture of me up. You see it? I'm waiting for it to pop up. YouTube's it's a little delayed. It's there. It's there. There Any- it is. Oh, it's so beautiful. I it's love so it. great. So guys, listen, you want to be a torchbearer. <laughs> you want to be a part of what we're doing because we're reaching the nation. We're going out to different places, going and reaching kids. We got a lot of events coming up here, especially we're going to Montana here very soon, then Texas, California as well. So we're excited to do those events, and uh, we're, it's you guys that get us there. So thank you again. Uh, we're going to cover Joel uh, because uh, it was a question from a listener. Uh-huh. Uh, how, does, how does the book of Joel, chapter 2, uh work in the church you can explain it mike if you want yeah so the the comment was fairly simple and that's why i appreciate it it basically asked okay what does joel 2 28 and 29 look like in today's church and it's a good question because we've we've been on this hop of uh gifts in the church and and have they ceased? Are they still continuing? And then we've gone down all those rabbit holes. And this is kind of moving back to a bird's eye view. And I like that because it, it kind of simplifies of like, okay, if all of this is pouring out on all mankind, and this is the time of that happening, what does it look like? How does the church do that? How does that, that operate typically with a church, and especially churches who are just starting to get into the concept of the gifts in the church and how you operate them as a church body, hey, this is a good primer for you. This is a good time to start asking those type of questions. And so, you know, we're going to just start right off. I'll haul off and read it. Joel 2, 28, 29. It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So, Mass, you want to tee off on opening thoughts? Yeah. So again, I'm putting it down below, Joel 2, 28 through 29. And really what he's saying here is those gifts will be given to us. Those gifts are there. The spirit of God will be poured out on all flesh. That is all true. Uh, and, and we have seen that where people have had the ability to see, to dream. Uh, and the thing I love is when he says, I'll pour it even out on servants, on women, on men. Uh, what that means is the spirit of God does not discriminate. It doesn't matter about hierarchical positions like the Pharisees wanted. Even in governments, we think that people are higher than the other. This is where liberty comes from. God gives the spirit to all mankind, to all flesh, which is awesome. Uh, so we're focusing on this set of scriptures. The problem is a lot of people will take that and say, see, he's going to do that. We're going to prophesy, dream, dream, see visions. But there is an order to doing that. OK, and Paul actually talks about this in First Corinthians 14, what it's like to have these gifts in the church. Now, you just mentioned this, Mike. Um, no parent alive would just allow their kid to just run amok in a church service saying things that he feels is right, that he's hearing, that he's sensing, that he's seeing. Uh, as a matter of fact, we call those kids, um, what's the word? Brats. 
we we see them in our churches sometimes you know they cry and you know you, you they, they they just like create a ruckus and they're disrupting the preacher and all these other things so we as equally cannot be brats in the spirit we can't just start saying things that we think is right because it's for the moment i always look to leadership and and i submit to leadership uh because leadership is who god gave that mantle to to run that church them and the elders if it's not within the vision of what the elders and the pastor is doing at that moment, then maybe the moment isn't right. What we have in our church is really cool is we have a prophetic team. And if someone has a word to give, they go to that prophetic team and say, hey, I'm kind of getting this from the Lord. What do you guys think? Eight out of 10 times, it's going to be like, okay, why don't you grab a microphone and go deliver that to the church? The prophets checking the prophets, um, especially in our church, we don't just let people blurt out in tongues like that because there must be an interpreter. As a matter of fact, uh, Paul says this in first Corinthians 14. He says, I wish you all could speak in tongues, but I even more, I wish you all could prophesy. Why? Because speaking in tongues, he says later on, there's many different languages in the world and every language has a meaning. So anyone who speaks in tongues should pray for the ability to interpret what has been said. Why? Because he says when, when someone understands, right, when they understand what they're saying, it can be understood by all prophecy is that thing. It can be understood by all he says in verse 15 in first corinthians 14 and you can jump in mike anytime you want to yeah no go for it well he said well then what shall i do i will pray in the spirit he said and i will also pray in words i understand i will sing in the spirit and i will sing in words i understand for if you praise god only in the spirit how can those who don't understand you praise god along with you how can they join with you in giving thanks um was it giving thanks when they don't understand what you are saying? You will be giving thanks very well, but it won't strengthen the people who hear you. He says, I thank God that I speak in tongues more than any of you, but in a church meeting, I would rather speak five understandable words to help others than 10,000 words in an unknown language. Verse 20, this is, the, this is the killer right here. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. He's saying, don't be a kid about it. Be mature about it. Mike, I have to go to Todd real quick. Can you kind of okay. handle it? Yeah. yeah, for sure. So this this concept, and, and if you back up just a little bit on 1 Corinthians 14, you'll notice, okay, what is he talking about? He's talking about, okay, you're, you're getting a little out of control with this whole tongues thing. And you notice, because he's reining people back in. He's, okay, let's settle down on this. Let's get some control over this. How should you act with this? And he's relating it to himself. And he's saying, look, you act like this. I do this more than you. But what I'm really focusing on is what's really important. And we've noticed movements where tongues, and we'll get back to Joel too, but this is an important segue because when you think of ecstatic, um, enthusiastic expressions of the gifts, so much the charismatic and the Pentecostal movement go to tongues. And Paul's saying, yeah, yeah, I get it. Y'all can speak in tongues. I can do it more than you. But what's our real focus? And people get misdirected and they get misguided. And that's why that kid analogy is, is pretty useful on this because if people are just hauling off and yelling in church and, and there's not order to it, there's not structure to it, it gets messy, it gets chaotic, and you actually diminish the power of what the Lord is trying to do because it's not under control. And so that's what Paul is referencing. Now, that's our theme when we go back to Joel 2 is, okay, what is the proper application of these things? God is saying, I'm going to pour out my spirit on all mankind. God's saying, there was a time where it was not poured out on all mankind. And if you look back at the Old Testament, and I've said this before, the people themselves chose not to hear the Lord specifically. If you remember, they were at the mount, Moses was there, God was going to speak to all the people, and the people said, no, 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 too much, not good, scares us, Moses, you be our man. So right there they said, okay, we're, we want a boundary, we don't want to hear the voice of the Lord, we want you to speak to us. That's really the prophetic office was the people saying, you tell us what he said. And the gift of tongues or the, the event of tongues, especially in the Old Testament, was another piece of that in the sense of it wasn't, hey, here's a foreign, foreign language that I'm going to talk to you in. It was, you won't hear the prophet 
that you originally wanted, right? You wanted somebody else to speak the word of the Lord to you. You didn't even, you wanted it that way, but now you won't even listen to the prophets. So now I'm going to come to you in people who are speaking of strange tongues, right? And so then you get to the New Testament and you get a pouring out of the Holy Spirit, which Joel himself said, the Lord speaking through him, there will be a pouring out of the Lord's Spirit on all mankind. So this was not just referencing the house of Israel. This was not just referencing a few people. This is all mankind. Now, he uses different examples of things which shows, hey, okay, some people are going to get this poured out on them, this poured out on them. I'll tell you this much. I don't dream very often. I know other people who have lots of dreams. Actually, my wife gets more dreams than I do that are spiritual. Okay? That's okay. Now, I've had some spiritual dreams, but don't think, okay, this means you better be having visions, having dreams, having words of prophecy all the time. Otherwise, the Lord hasn't poured his spirit out on you. Just take a deep breath. And especially to those who aren't used to the gifts or they're used to spiritual ex experiences, encounters, they're not sure, okay, what's the... And aside for a moment, we look at Scripture and we'll look at 40 years of events crammed into two chapters. And we'll go, oh, see, it's just always happening for that person, and I never. But that person may have only had one or two spiritual experiences in their life, and they've written it down. Take a deep breath. It's okay you're not getting visions or dreams every night. It's quite all right. That's not the obligation or the requirement for you to be a spirit-filled believer. Adding on to that, when that type of stuff happens, there's an order to be had in the modern church, in the current church. Now we go back to Acts. Peter said, look, this event, Pentecost, the, the 120 speaking in the tongues of the men around them, and, and we could get into what that actually means, but sticking with the point, Peter said, see, that's Joel. Joel is happening in this. And that was a sign of the new age of the church. And if you compare it against the Old Testament, or contrast rather, the Old Testament was they could have heard the word of God for themselves, the voice of God, but they said, no, we don't want that. So it really progressed in this different system. This was a repairing of it. This was a, a renewal. This was a rebirth of how that relationship was supposed to be with the Lord and his people. It was a pouring out of, this is the new covenant. This is the Holy Spirit being your counselor, your helper, directing you into all truth. And so you as a church, yes, you have them. They, they're there for your use. What are they there for? The common good. So in the modern church, if you have these gifts, these things going on, they're there for the common good. Now, you may have a dream that's for you and not for everybody else. That's okay. You don't have to share that with people. And to get more specific, I'll say this much. You're not always going to get a word that has to be spoken to somebody else. I've had words where the Lord told me, no, I don't want you to say anything right now. Just hold on to that. And people will, will, will argue yeah, but what about everybody going which way? And this person hears that, and that person hears that. And I get it, because that can be confusing. That can be a bit of a fight. You know, you're kind of wondering, okay, shouldn't the Holy Spirit be consistent? We can't forget we all know in part and see in part. And your flesh can easily get in the way of a prophetic word. It just can. Because what happens is you may hear this much, but you just, you just can't stop. You, you got to keep talking. And so when you keep talking, well, guess what? You start adding stuff, and you left the Lord 15 minutes ago, but hey, you're still spouting out stuff that sounds spiritual. That's why when you've got a prophetic word, it's very much a weighing it out with the Lord and being very specific about what the Lord gave you. And emotionalism can also take over. So how do these things look in the modern church? You're not getting overly emotional in terms of, ah, because what will happen is you'll feel an emotion. 
And then you'll go with that as an unction of the Lord. And I've got to just say this to somebody. When in reality, that might not be the case. You could have just been been having a fleshly emotion about something because, man, we've got biases. We've got things that we we struggle with. We've got um, wounds. We've got our own desires. And all of those can mix up into this whole conversation, and then all of a sudden something's given, not because that was actually from the Lord, but because that deep down that's really what we wanted to say, because how that's how we felt. And I think it's very important for this stuff to look healthy in the church. You got to weigh it out with the Lord and be patient with it. Maybe it needs to rest for a little bit, right? And people will use it but it's burning up in my bones. I've got to open my mouth. And Massey and I were talking about this the other day. That's not what he was talking about. He wasn't talking about like, just spouting out stuff. What he was talking about is just, I have this unction in me that won't go away. And I, the only way this unction will dissipate is speaking it out. Now it doesn't mean he can't keep his mouth shut for two hours or a day or a week. But it's just something so deeply in him that the Lord has pressed upon him that he can't help but say it over the course. And there's a, a sober-minded, it's so funny, this, this paradox between drunk in the spirit, yet a sober-mindedness. And you've got to ask yourself, is what is happening glorifying God? bringing people closer to Christ, leading people towards him? Is it for the common good of the body? Or is it for you, for your own spiritual experience, your own enjoyment? And when we take Joel 2, we can weigh it out this way. And going back to Joel 2, 28, it will come about after this. Now, he's talking about a whole, if you look at Joel 1, And two, you're looking at a whole explanation of events, especially including the house of Israel. He says, come about after this, I will pour out my spirit on all mankind. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. Now, what some people might take that to mean is, oh, well, it's only the sons and daughters will prophesy all our sons and daughters, so that includes that. And we're sons and daughters of God, right? Your old men will dream dreams, so that means young men won't dream dreams. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, look, everybody will be given something. All mankind, all flesh, as in man's flesh, will be able to participate in this system, just like it used to be you will instruct your children on the way they should go, But then it gets into, I will write it on your hearts. It's a new covenant, a new relationship with God, a restoration of what it means to be in communion with God. And if that's what we're looking for, how does it look moving forward? And you can actually look at the Old Testament. Now, there were prophets who did odd things. God better have called you to do that odd thing. It's you're not obligated to lie on your side and tie yourself down for 200 days. God's not calling you to that. But there are times where people full of the Spirit would give a word or lay hands or raise the dead or provide, right? And so these things we've... Yo, bro. We've seen things happen in the Old Testament as events that then actually happen in the New Testament through Christ that then we as the church can actually have happen because, what? guess what? Christ was full of the Holy Spirit. His people in the Old Testament were full of the Holy Spirit. We are now full of the Holy Spirit. And I, honestly, that just hits me of like, that's probably the most simple argument to be made in continuism. Um is this thought of, well, if people full of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament were healing the sick, raising the dead, uh, healing lepers, all of that, Jesus was full of the Holy Spirit, 
It was healing the sick, raising the dead, cleansing the leper. If we're full of the Holy Spirit, wouldn't it stand to reason that we could dream dreams and see visions and prophesy and heal the sick and cleanse the leper and raise the dead? I, I think that's really the most simple argument is it didn't change it didn't. <laughs> being full of the Holy Spirit, right? Like we didn't suddenly. This is so crazy. So you crazy know? we're talking about this today, bro, because I just got into a meeting with Pastor Todd. Sorry about me leaving like that. I'm yeah, just okay. of a couple of things. But we were talking about even the use of like shofars, even the use of like these things yeah. where it's like people will just use and feel like they have the liberty to do something without any kind of check valve, without any kind of because they feel in the spirit. And it's like, dude, if it's not aligning with the whole body of the church and like where the place is going, do you think maybe it's a little off? Like when I remember one of the first times I was in our church, uh, it's probably six years ago or so, this woman ripped out in like a like a wailing, like a weeping. And bro, the whole place broke. The whole place just broke out in weeping. That was a corporate moment where the place went into repentance. It was the coolest thing to watch. And there's other people who are just yelling out the name of Jesus and clapping their hands really loud, trying to make a scene and get, you know, garner attention. Right. You just have to know, like, there's moments where it's like, that's just an offense and you can hear it, dude. It's it's like a, a clanging symbol, like it says in Corinthians. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a tinkling brass. It's not... It doesn't fit the moment. It's not there. It's not drawing people to Jesus. It's drawing people to themselves. And a lot yeah. of the times with these giftings, and this is what we warn about consistently in all, in all of our talks, the gifts exist. But guys, he just said it right here in verse 20. Dear brothers and sisters, don't be childish in your understanding of these things. Be innocent as babies when it comes to evil, but be mature in understanding of matters of this kind. The gifts. Be mature in matters of this kind. He says, I will speak to my own people through strange languages and things like that. And then he says, there's a call to orderly worship in verse 26 down to 39. Like, be orderly about what we're doing. Because what I love here, if I can just explain this, I, Mike and I were talking about this. The, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, nowhere in Scripture does it say that a baptism in the Holy Spirit will make you be weird in front of all people. It doesn't. You, you know what it actually does say? You'll preach the gospel with boldness. You will have a conviction of repentance. You'll be able to speak clearly in other tongues so other people can understand the gospel and, the, and, and those kind of things. But it's like, cool, when he says here, it is the same for you. If you speak to, to people in words they don't understand, how will they know what you're saying? You might as well be talking in an empty space. Paul is even saying here, don't be weird in what you're doing. And I, I can't read right. any of the comments because it's live, bro. But is there any I'm, comments going on? No, I'm I'm watching. Okay. It's just, it's just, we have to be mindful of where we're at in the spirit. We have to be mindful of what God is doing. And if we're being ridiculous about it, then what's the point of doing what we're doing? Like, is right. it just to look cool to, to like, I, I'm still lost about this. Why, why would we want the giftings if there's no order to it? Do you understand what I'm saying? Right. And there, there's that, <laughs> there's that extreme nature that, tends to come out in the charismatic, the Pentecostal Truth. realm where you're actually diminishing and drawing away from the power of the Lord. And for those, especially those who are wondering, hey, how does this look in the modern church? Do not forget that the, the girl following Paul was demon possessed and she was saying these men know the way to the Lord. It sounds good. It sounds like it's declaring the goodness of God. And Paul puts up with it. It, it, it says a couple of days, right? And and finally, in his annoyance, turns around and casts the demon out, right? And I think we think we we tend to think an expression of the Holy Spirit, the more flagrant and flamboyant and crazy it is, the more of the Lord it must be, because I'm just in a fit of emotion. And and I was saying this while you you were talking to Pastor Todd that that's we get our emotions involved in this we get our feelings involved in, oh, i just feel like i've got to blow the shofar yeah. and or then it's raise your hands you know and, like and i do think too there's something to be said about mature men and women of god operating in those gifts so like yes we have to make sure that people that are speaking in whatever a prophecy or whatever that they're mature how do you know that what is their fruit what is their walk? It's not what they say, but it's what they do. How is their report with people in our church? How's their report with people outside? Like there's all those factors that come into play. And, and you'll know when it's the flesh, when they give a word, when it pulls them to themselves and it comforts them in the flesh. 
And you'll also know when it's complete judgment, like it's just a judgment with no repentance and like you're just damned. I was in a ministry like that. It was freaking weird. So I'm just saying that I, I know this from experience. There has to be a balance of when a word comes, it brings people to repentance in the cross or it edifies them in their walk to say, continue in what you're doing. Press into the Lord. Do these things. When it comes to tongues, same thing. You, you don't just do tongues. And it says it's actually a personal thing. That's a private understood thing. Be careful what you're doing in the church because you may rip off something, but it's like, what was that for? You know what I mean? Right. I didn't. I even say that, and I'm like, there was no point in that. You know what I mean? We were talking right. about that in the cessation movie that when that lady said, "I had this word," and I basically said, "Even if you can only obey eighty percent, he wants a hundred percent of that eighty percent." She goes, "How ridiculous!" I'm like, "Yeah, that was ridiculous. Yeah, it was. <laughs> that was actually a ridiculous word. That's not even a word. That's that's that, that's not even that's, that's that's a slogan on Twitter, dude. <laughs> right." Right. So just be, go ahead. I, I was just going to say, so, and, and that one really frustrates me because you missed it. The gifts don't exist. Like, or you just haven't been properly trained and to understand what are the gifts and how do they operate? And, Truth. and that's, that's another thing is I think we, we get this idea that there can't be discipline. There can't be training. Old Testament had school of prophets, they had schools of prophets, right? So there was a training, there was a raising up, there was a mentorship that happened of don't do this, do this, do it this way, don't do it that way. And at some way, some point in time, we suddenly went, no, 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 that's quenching the Holy Spirit. Right. Wrong. God is a God of order. Now, I'm not saying that he doesn't do something that is unpredictable, but he sets in authority, he sets in structures. He said, Christ led the disciples day in, day out. Why? He was training them. He was raising them up. He was correcting them on this. He was leading them on that. I don't know where we got it stuck in our heads that all of a sudden all of that goes out the window and you're squashing the Holy Spirit because you're training up people over the long term. And the gifts Truth. are the same way. The gifts are something to be trained in. Otherwise, Paul wouldn't say, hey, eagerly seek the greater gifts. He wouldn't right. say that if, well, you're stuck with what you got, and either you're awesome or you're, you just suck. You know, it's like, <laughs> no, eagerly desire the greater gifts, as in there's a training and a discipline that can happen through that. Right, those. right, right. And they're gifts for a reason. So don't, don't flaunt your gift. Be thankful for your gift and be humble with that gift. You, does that make sense? Like when right. you have a gift, don't don't parade it like it's some great thing. Like uh, you're special, more special than anyone else. Every one of us has a gifting. Don't flaunt it in the pursuit of views and clicks. Make sure that it's used to edify the one who gave you the gift. Be grateful to the one who gave you the gift and edify and admonish him when you use that gift. Does that right. make sense? So yeah, that's cool. Cool show, man. Yeah. No. All right, guys. Well, I hope you got something out of it. it it's tough because for us, it's it's kind of like a keep them in order, explore them, you know. And and I want to reiterate as we close this out, like Massey said, have the community check things, right? Find if you've got a dream or a vision or a prophetic word, there's nothing wrong with finding somebody you trust who's really mature, who, who's been in it a long time and saying, hey, what do you think of this? This is what I was given. And I don't right. think people check their words or check their visions or dreams enough. They're just like, oh, I had a dream and now I'm going to spout it all out and everybody will see how awesome I am at the spiritual yeah. gifts. And it's like, yeah, but if you weigh it all out, you can see the flesh intertwining in this. You yeah. can see the bias in it. You can see the hurt in that, you know? Yep. And I had explained to them while you were with Pastor Todd that it's so easy for ourselves, our flesh, to get wrapped up in a spiritual gift, and you can get misled real fast, and you can start Super misleading quick. other people, because maybe he only gave you five words, and if he only gave you five words, speak five words, because well, if you start going this way, you're going to go way off, and yeah. that's when it really gets nasty messy. So. Well, it happened to me, dude. You know what I mean? And, and like, you, you get so gifted, and you get led astray, uh, because someone speaks into your gifting and you get led astray in that. So you guys got to be careful. We all got to be careful. I'm guilty of it. Like I, I misuse my giftings. I've said some stupid things 
uh, because I was not mature. Mm-hmm. I was not trained. I wasn't disciplined. And yeah. um, I don't want the next generation to go through it. So if we act mature, they will be mature. You know what I mean? Right. And, and you're not you're not special. So if you're saying they don't understand, they don't hear me. It's like if you're playing the victim, I would go to the Holy Spirit and check that. Bro. I would. I would, because why is it that he can't give the leader the same word that you're getting? Like, it should be a confirmation of what's going on in the room, right? So check your heart, man. If you're playing the constant victim, maybe it's you, not them. Yeah, dude, and that's such a good word, is the the victim, victim heart is a good indicator of why you're actually doing it. Right. So, all right, guys. Well, thank you so much. That was a good one. That was a good one, man. I wasn't there for about five minutes of it. But... Ah, it's all good. That's good. We got it covered. So, all right, all right guys. We Love will you, see fellas. you Friday. Love y'all. Have a great day.